I want you to imagine a wall of a house. Now, what do I need to construct this wall? You're obviously going to tell me that you need bricks. And to build a wall, you would have to take a bunch of these bricks, start arranging them in an orderly manner, layer by layer. And finally, you have a huge wall. Let's look at what happens in living organisms. And it's pretty much the same story. Living organisms that you see around you are comprised of tiny building blocks. And these blocks are arranged in an orderly manner, layer by layer by layer, just like the bricks in the wall that we saw. But these building blocks get a special name. Yes, they are called cells. Now, cells form the basis of all life on Earth, right from microorganisms to plants to animals to even human beings. They're all made up of cells. And life as we know it would not exist if not for the presence of cells. So what exactly is this cell? And yes, I know you heard it a hundred times over. A cell can be defined as the structural and the functional unit of life. But today, it's time to break that definition down and understand it part by part. Structural, functional. What do we mean by these terms? So let me start with structural. The structural unit of life uh, simply refers to the fact that all complex organisms like you and me, are comprised of an orderly arrangement of cells. And these cells together don't just sit quietly as cells. They form different structures that are going to together again make up the entire body. For example, many cardiac muscle cells come together. They form cardiac tissue. Cardiac tissue comes together, makes up the heart. Now, when I call a cell a functional unit, it simply means that a cell with all its parts and components is the smallest living being that can survive and function on its own. In other simple words, it means that the smallest living organism is actually a single celled organism, also called a unicellular organism. Let me take an amoeba, for example, amoeba, mind you, is not the smallest living organism. I will tell you who that is pretty soon. But amoeba serves my purpose right now as a good example because it's a unicellular organism. And this single cellular organism performs all functions of life on its own. It consumes food, it digests the food, then it utilizes the food for its energy and finally ingests the undigested food out of the body. Now, none of the individual components of the amoeba, like the membrane which covers the amoeba or even the proteins present inside the cell can actually function on their own. They all need to come together into a cell as a whole. And this cell as a whole can be considered as a functional unit of life. Okay, so I did speak about the smallest living cell. I told you it's not an amoeba. And I told you also that even though an amoeba is unicellular, there is something smaller than that hanging around here. So do you know what that is? Well, the smallest known cell is actually a parasitic bacteria called mycoplasma, which is which is really tiny, about 200 to 300 nanometers in width. Like, I can't even show it. Really, really, really tiny. You need a powerful microscope to see it. And the curious ones among you may actually think, hey, aren't viruses tinier than that? Well, you're right. Viruses are tinier than that. Sometimes being even 20 nanometers small. But do they fall into a classification of a cell? Actually, they do not have a fully functioning autonomous machinery, okay, which in very simple words means that they won't replicate, they won't function unless they're inside another living cell. So they don't exactly fit into the definition of a typical cell. They're more on the borderline of the living and the dead. So no, virus does not classify as the smallest cell. Okay, so we spoke about the smallest. I'm sure you're curious to know. What about the biggest? What is the biggest living cell found today? It's an, an ostrich egg. And if you look at an ostrich egg, it's about six inches in height. 
and pretty heavy for an egg 1.5 kg is in weight and if you want to compare this ostrich egg is about 5000 times bigger than the mycoplasma which you cannot even see which basically brings me to the next point on cells cells come in many many shapes and many many sizes and we spoke about two extreme ends on the size of cells but most living cells actually fall somewhere between these two extremes we also have a nerve cell in the blue whale while we're talking about it that is estimated to be a staggering 25 meters long making it the longest cell in existence 